as we have been doing since March, we are using remote uh, collaborative technology to conduct this public meeting, uh, given relief that uh, Governor Baker provided in an executive order, um, relieving us of certain requirements under the open meeting law. Um, we will proceed in the event that there's any disruption in today's meeting. Please go to the uh, Gaming Commission's website and there'll be instructions. Um, um, just to make a note going forward, Karen um, Wells, the executive director, did note that uh, given Loretta um, Milios' status as interim, she won't be joining. And so, because we can't see every number, she's not here by phone either. We'll con convene today public meeting number 322 for my fellow commissioners who've been here from the start. That's a, a meaningful a look at Commissioner Cameron. Hard to believe, huh? Yeah, it's uh, almost a whole year's worth of meetings, right? I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> yeah. We really have. So num uh, number 322, and um, it is now uh, 10.03 on o October 1st. Happy October, everyone. We will get started. We have a very limited um, agenda today, but it was important to convene so that um, all the commissioners could be involved in this important decision-making process. Um, so it's limited in scope and we're taking advantage of the connectivity that we have through remote to take care of these kinds of matters efficiently rather than waiting another, you know, a whole cycle to next Thursday. So commission, uh, executive, you know, I keep on calling you commissioner, um, Karen. Executive Director Wells, if you could just um, uh, start us off on this process. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Madam Chair, members of the commission, uh, Chair Judd Stein and I uh, did work with Commissioner Cameron on a draft of the uh, job posting for the Director of the Investigations and Enforcement Bureau, which outlines the duties and responsibilities, skills and qualifications, experience, education and training. Uh, the proposal is that we review that document today, see if there's any input or any suggested changes from the rest of the commissioners um, to uh, uh, get some kind of consensus that this is what the job is and this would be an appropriate posting. Uh, and then we would start by posting the position uh, and starting the competitive process for hiring of the director of the IED. So Karen, do you want to walk us through the document? Is that Yeah, I was that's thinking, why? I have it right up here. I was thinking I would share the document if that's helpful to the commissioners. Okay. I think that makes sense, right? All right. Okay. So uh, in can everyone see that? Is that showing up the text here? Yeah. Tiny, tiny. Right. So, hold on. Um, so just walking maybe, through the document. Maybe if you did one page at a time, it might be a little larger, Karen. Is that possible? Okay, let me see. Uh, if anyone can chime in on how to do that. It's just. Mm. Oh, it might be in view. Yeah. If you, Karen, if you go down and just increase where it says 100% further, oh, it will expand it. Oh, that's a good idea. There we go. Thank you, Sterl. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so uh, we use the same format mm -hmm. that we generally use for um, job description, job postings at the commission to give the, the overview. And uh, we started out with some language from the statute because this is a statutorily designated position and there is some language in 23K section six about that. Uh, so we pulled some language there. Usually we do indicate in job postings who is the supervisor. Um, and in this uh, language from the statute indicates that um, head of the IEB, which is identified as deputy director of investigations and enforcement, uh, is under the direction, control, and supervision of the chair. So what we've done here is put that in here directly to quote the statute. We do. Uh, use the term Director of Investigations and Enforcement Bureau, and, and Kathy and I have had discussions about uh, incorporating that Deputy Director from the statute, so it would be Deputy Director, comma, Director of Investigations and Enforcement Bureau. Uh, so it incorporates both the statutory reference and also um, the structure within the agency itself. And this uh, language about the being the Executive Administrative Head of the Bureau and administering the laws, that's all from the statute. Uh, so all that language is in there and this language about the Bureau performing such functions as the chair may determine in relation to enforcement, including the licensees of investigation of all licensees of the commission 
is off in the statute. So why don't I pause there, see if there's any questions, suggestions on changes there, anything that uh, the commissioners have any input in before we move forward. I can't see everyone, so people should just chime in. Um, let me just say, this is, this is great. It comes directly from the statute. The question that I think might be in people's minds, we don't necessarily have to address it in the job description, is the relation of the deputy director with the executive director. Right, right. So Kathy and I have chatted about that and, and what makes sense. Kathy, I don't know if you want to give your thoughts first and then I can uh, chime in after you. Well, at a certain point, we do address um, the executive director somewhat. Um, so that you know, um, I've been operating under the statute, you know, um, since July of last year. There was a, a bit of a disruption at the beginning. Um, and the way that um, Edward Joshin and I worked together on this was that I would um, fulfill my statutory obligations the bureau's um, director has full administrative responsibilities of the bureau, but it sits within the commission. And the executive director, of course, runs the commission administrative and has exactly the same statutory language. So from my perspective, the bureau would want to um, benefit from the collective benefit of the administrative efficiencies of the commission. And so, for instance, the legal team for the commission provides legal services to the Bureau throughout. Of course, there's specialized legal services for the Bureau, but Todd and team would provide all the benefits of guidance on regulatory matters that expand across the commission. Uh, so I see it as um, a, the chair would maybe be a tiebreaker um, if the um, the Bureau's director really had perhaps an HR matter uh, that they felt very strongly about and somehow it conflicted perhaps on a financial basis, a budgetary basis with the um, executive director, given that the executive director is in charge of the finance through this, um, high, the single uh, responsibility of the hire of this uh, chief financial and accounting officer. Um, no, they would they would have to work it out but the executive director's um, uh, responsibility probably is not over um, by the statute the chair does have unique authority over that particular position and i tried to divorce myself from that when i thought about it before i came here um, as i as i tried to understand the structure and I continue to do that and trying to divorce um, personalities and people from the roles and try to think about the roles as a way to navigate these responsibilities. Karen, I don't know if you want to chime in, but if you want to give more concrete examples that we talked about. Yeah, so, you know, I, I flagged for Kathy some examples because I would like to understand what the expectation is from the commission as, as to my role as executive director and how you want this to work. You know, in looking at the statute, the executive director is the administrative head of the agency and the deputy director is the head and administrative, uh, the administrative head of the bureau, which is within the commission. So there necessitates some connection between the executive director and the uh, deputy director with respect to uh, some administrative responsibilities within the office. The statute does give the deputy directors or the head of the IEB the, a lot of authority um, to run that bureau, but there are going to be circumstances, for example, HR issues, budget issues, salary issues, you know, those administrative issues, you know, workspace, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, I think there, we should expect there would be a connection between the executive director and the deputy director in that role. Um, the other piece, um, you know, Kathy and I have talked about is, you know, if there is a particular matter uh, that may come before the commission, there, you know, in in, in adjudicatory uh, manner, the deputy director does have uh, significant authority there. I think. I could be a resource there, particularly given that I have experience with the IEB. Uh, you know, if the commission 
um, you know, I'd be interested in some feedback from the commission on, you know, how that could work if, if, there, if you would like some uh, sort of uh, assistance given there, if, if appropriate, and I'm looking for feedback on that. Um, go ahead, Enrique, you finish. Well, the, the, I was, I, I think this is all a very good discussion, and I think it mirrors a lot of the practices that we've had in the past, and most notably in the recent past. Um, my, I was really more concretely thinking about how do we say all of that in this mm -hmm. job description? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, think, I think that the statutory language, if I were applying for the job, you'd go to the statute. Yeah, so, and, 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 and it's, the statute, it's directly and quoted, this, and it's directly quoted here. I just, I just think we're silent on everything maybe if that we, we both maybe said. If we, yeah, look, what if we continue through and see if we think okay. about, um, because okay. in terms of, um, you know, again, I said to Karen, another chair might decide to have full control in a way that's different because of that statutory language. It is a unique structure and it's different from other states. It is different from New Jersey. It is different from Nevada. It is the statute that the Massachusetts legislature adopted. And so, um, you know, I can, I can only say that if we're hiring and we're having a competitive external, you know, hire, Perhaps Loretta is going to be a candidate, but we are, if we push it outside, the first place any candidate would go to is the statute. So, um, you know, in terms of uh, if we're going to suggest something that deviates from the statutory language, we do need to be all on board. Um, but let's see if we can go through. We can't. Of course, I'm saying if we're suggesting deviate, we really can't. We have to comply with the statute. So let, let's go through and, you know, I, um, I can only say that when we think about it, I'm trying to detach people in the roles and that, in, that includes me, and that includes each of the individual commissioners, and that includes even Karen. And the reason why is because it's the only way we can really think about roles and responsibilities. If you start attaching individuals, it gets confusing. And this is a really healthy discussion for us to have because of this juncture. We also have Todd on the phone to help us. Um, I can only tell you that the way I've been navigating, me personally, has been since last July. And I don't think you probably have seen too many disruptions. And I would probably continue to navigate. But if I were to leave tomorrow, another chair would also look at this language. And so, you know, uh, I just am, I'm, I'm, I'm. Which it's, which is why it's important to really flesh this out now. That's um, right. Thank and you. Enrique, I read that second sent, uh, that uh, second paragraph and I, it, it led me to think if I were applying for this job, I'd have concerns. You know, is someone going to tell me how the team conducts an investigation? And we talked that through. Um, and I, I don't think that, I know that's not the case. And um, so I think a candidate may want to know that, frankly, you know? Um, so it's just, it's just a question of, um, yes, that's the language, but how do we in fact um, implement this is really what we're talking about. And I don't think it's as easy as, well, this is what it says. Yeah. So some addition to that second paragraph about the relationship it, I, I mean, I love all the statutory language that we've included, uh, but some addition to that second paragraph that somehow spells out the relationship between the director of the IEB and the executive director is what you're suggesting. I guess I'd like to know what, the, what we're proposing that relationship to be. You just described it. You and Karen sort of did. The question so, okay. I have... The question, okay. you know, the, the question I only had is how do we just put it in a succinct so, paragraph? Okay, so let's, let's go through and see about all the responsibilities and then we can go back if we want to say that, you know, um, again, it would be based on me and how I perceive it. And that's important for everybody to realize, you know, how, how I see it as the functioning um, of the, the, the uh, executive director as the, 
the commissioner, just like Karen said, you know, the administrator for the commission. And then, you know, I gave the example with Karen. If we hired somebody who said suddenly, you know what, the bureau really needs to be separate, physically separate, the chances of investigations being compromised somehow between staff, et cetera, they really need to be separate. The statute sort of suggests that, but the chair does supervise. And well, so I would, my personal would say, slow down. We're working with the executive director who has, you know, the totality um, uh, response of administrative responsibility for the commission and you still sit within the commission. So that's a concrete example. Well, that was frankly how we came about to when Steve delegated the um, the supervision to the to to the executive director. That was that was one of the questions that had to be. That, well, that was one of the solutions. Well, my former my successor delegated it, the authority to many people. Yeah. Um, and in the yeah. delegation, he also attempted to revoke the delegation. There's a long history. The truth is, is that I'm not comfortable delegating statutory authority based on legal advice I've received. I am very comfortable asking people to help me accomplish that. And so that's the distinction I wanna make clear is that this statutory authority really can't be delegated away because no matter what, in the end, you know, the, whoever it's delegated to owns it. Yeah, so I think, I think we should just say that. We should say that in the, you know, somewhere. Uh, say what? Maybe as, as, as Bruce says, that there's, there's a coordination, there's a practice, uh, there's a, you know, a role for the executive director in this, uh, however we want to phrase it, maybe we don't have to come up with it today, but that's been my point as to, to try to, you know, because on its own, um, it just feels like, well, you know, the, 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 which is the, start, the statutory language that it just reports to the chair and that it ends and it starts and ends there. Okay. Do we want to go down to the other parts we talked about? That maybe yeah, the yeah. Next so step. we, you know, we do want to give the uh, applicants sort of an overview of what the responsibilities are. I think the general overview is that there is uh, supervision over four divisions. You have the licensing division, the gaming agents division, the financial investigation division, and the chief enforcement counsel's office. And then this other language about uh, the state police that statutory. So there is sort of this dual reporting uh, for the state police gaming enforcement unit to the uh, uh, deputy director, as well as the um, colonel of the state police. And then uh, there's also language about coordination with the attorney general's office and the ABCC. So that, that language is statutory. And then also, I thought it was important to put in this, you know, this language from the statute about the Bureau being a law enforcement agency just so any applicant would understand it, 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 there are some specific uh, powers and authorities given by statute, for example, the subpoena power, things like that. So um, the fact that it is by statute a law enforcement agency is helpful um, in, in, uh, in helping a potential candidate understand the scope of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the overview. Is there anything else about a like, general overview of the bureau that the commission thinks should be added to help a candidate understand. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to scroll down to duties and responsibilities here. Uh, first bullet is to administer the complete licensing and registration process within the bureau, including investigations of both individual and entity applicants for licensure or registration. So that incorporates the licensing division and the investigations. A team which includes state police and we also have some civilian investigators and that whole process is overseen by uh, the head of the IEB so that that's a that's a big function that's been a ton of work over the years so I think that made sense for the first bullet um, and then there's uh, oversee on-site compliance of licensed Massachusetts gaming establishments with all applicable laws as well as compliance with approved casino internal control submissions so this piece uh, has to do with the gaming agents division and our on-site compliance, which is a significant responsibility within the Bureau. As you know, um, you know that's one of the largest, uh, second to state police, the largest units in the office with the, I think approximately 33 uh, uh, FTE count, with a 33 FTE count there. 
uh, and it is a 24-7 operation. Uh, so that's very important within the Bureau. Uh, third bullet is oversee adverse action process, including issuance of civil administrative penalties for serious non-compliance by licensees. So that, uh, that has to do with the Chief Enforcement Counsel's Office and sort of the legal component of the, uh, of the Bureau, which works in conjunction with the Gaming Agents Division and you know, with the Licensing Division. So that all those pieces, they all work together. Uh, then we also have uh, some other language in here. Fourth bullet point, provide effective management of and leadership for all divisions within the Bureau. That's a, that's a critical function. Uh, there's a lot going on within the Bureau uh, and you would need someone with that management and leadership ability. Uh, the next bullet point is continually review and develop policies and procedures within the Bureau for all investigations and enforcement activities. And that's something, you know, I, I feel strongly about that is a good thing to put in the, the job description because we've had conversations about uh, the fact that we don't want to remain stagnant, that we want to reevaluate, we constantly want to do better, and we don't want to create an agency where, well, this is how we've always done it, so this is how we do it. Um, and I think that in the job description, that part of the job is to take a fresh look and review. And also we want to make sure that uh, po policies and procedures are documented. Because if they're not documented, people just doing things, oh, this is how I think we're supposed to do things, it's, it's uh, not effective management and then it's difficult to do a review process. Uh, we also have a bullet point for administrating appropriate training uh, so that folks are responsible uh, knowledgeable of all regulations, laws, and policies and procedures. Uh, we also do have a bullet point which references the executive director, which talks about in coordination with the executive director, partner with the finance department to develop and oversee the IE bud, the annual budget. Uh, anytime you have a significant division uh, or bureau within any state agency, the budgetary process is very important and um, managing that budget is important and understanding that you are working within the constraints of a budget. So that is one piece where there is an example of a direct link with the executive director. Maybe we want to flush out some others. You know, I'm, I'm certainly open to any comments the commissioners have on that. Uh, and then monitor IEB operations to assess performance against budget and legal requirement and implement changes as necessary. Uh, so that's more of a uh, similar to the um, policies and procedures. It's a, it's a little bit broader though, that we're always looking to uh, be flexible uh, within our budget requirements. And also we've got to comply with the law. You know, the law may change. Uh, we never know. There may be, um, uh, any issues may come up and we want to do uh, sort of a, uh, an assessment about how we're doing and performance metrics. And that's, that's very important with any kind of uh, strong state agency. So those are sort of the, the oh, that's sort of the overview and the bullet points, certainly open to any suggestions, comments, additions, subtractions. You know what, Karen, you, it just hit me when you just said um, the example about the coordination with the executive director for finance and yeah. oversee the annual budget. Uh, it occurs to me that there's a couple of other bullets that uh, that right there, um, you know, providing uh, 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 assessing performance against budget and legal requirements, for example, or um, you know, uh, understanding, reviewing the policies and procedures that could also be done in coordination with the executive director as more of the administrative type function. So I wonder if we could break these bullets into two two sub bullets you know there's 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 a, a portion of them that are clearly of the of the exec of the deputy director you know especially those that be, that that are that pertain to investigations and then maybe a sub a subheading that said that would say something in for administrative functions in conjunction with the executive director bullet 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 which are the ones that are towards the latter part latter part of these of these paragraphs. Do, 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 you, do you see what I'm saying? Sorry, are you saying, so for example, maybe coordinate administrative functions such as HR, legal, budget, yeah. well, so the director? Look at, yeah, in 
or an alternative would be to do in coordination with the executive director preface that on a couple of other bullets as well right. the one about assessing performance the one about policies and procedures all of those those things could also be done or should also be done in, co in coordination with the executive director yeah i guess I the think, question is is that the chair by statute or is that the executive director and what you know what do you think um, I hate to go back to the beginning, but I'm, as I'm reading this, I think one of the ways it might clear up what we're struggling with is we've somewhat stuck with the language of the statute, but not entirely tracked it. And I think if we stick closer to the tracking of the language, it might make that division a little easier to delineate. Okay. So the first sentence as is, and just so I'm you know, I didn't write this. Karen um, paraphrased the statute. Yes, I, did. Uh, I had yeah, just right. wanted to put the uh, statutory yeah. reference in. No, yeah. no, if you break it up so you can, if you have that first sentence under the direction, control, supervision of the chair, yep. the director of the IEB, the PRINS, um, shall be responsible for administering and enforcing the laws relative to the Bureau and to each administrative unit of the Bureau pursuant to 23K, Section 6. You yep. then go back to the statute and all the specific sentences, the Bureau shall be under the supervision and control of the Deputy Director of IEB. Um, it is, falls within the Commission, it is the primary enforcement agent for regulatory matters. But I think if you break that out and sort of reinforce that sort of the day-to-day -day supervision and control of IEB falls on the Deputy Director, then I think when you get back into duties and responsibilities, the discussion about the execution of some of those day-to-day -day, um, supervision and control of the Bureau can then be delineated effectively to say, you know what, ED can ha help them execute this versus chair has supervision here. Mm -hmm. I think if we, if we break that up that way, I just feel like it's easier to break up what we're talking about further down. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I, I can go back and pull that language from the statute. Does that make sense to everybody else? So, so we're yeah. adding additional language there that's more specific about the role of the uh, deputy director? Is that what you're suggesting, I, I, I'm, What I'm doing is tracking the statute. Yeah. Or, you know, almost verbatim so that that first sentence, what it does is it conflates the, when it says, is the executive and administrative head of the bureau? Yeah. That's actually a completely separate sentence in the statute. Right. So if you remove that, uh -huh. and the statute read as is, put that statutory sentence in where that yellow is now. Yeah. Then it follows more naturally. Like here's the broader supervisory structure from chair to deputy director. Yeah. Okay. So um, Eileen, Eileen, can Eileen, do you have the statute in front of you? Could you read it, yeah. please, so that folks understand? Because uh, I want to understand the distinction. Yeah. Um, so you know, I am, I'm being careful to make sure that the, the role of the deputy director is clear. Um, and so. Right. So it basically this paragraph takes what is section 6A and just yeah. shortens it a little bit. Yeah, so I think Karen the, tried to make it less yeah, right. legal, more legal, here. more friendly. Yeah. Right. You want it as digestible as possible, but I do think if we break it back out, it helps with the discussion that we're having because. Okay. They break it up to say there shall be within the commission an IEB, which is the primary enforcement agency for regulatory matters under this chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, Bureau shall perform such functions as the chair may determine in relation to enforcement, including investigation of licensees. That's that sort of standalone paragraph that we have in there. The next two sentences we've conflated into one, but they actually read distinctly, which is the Bureau shall be under the supervision and control of the Deputy Director of Investigations and Enforcement, period. The Deputy Director shall be the Executive and Administrative Head of the Bureau and shall be responsible for administering and enforcing the laws relative to the Bureau and each administrative unit of the Bureau. And I think when you read it that way, the delineation between the, ch the Chair's role in relation to that position and the Bureau, and then what the responsibilities are of the Deputy Director, is just a little more clearly delineated if we just track that language. And 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 what's the distinction? Because I think right now it shortens, it goes under the control of the chair and then says and is the executive head and responsible for everything. And then it goes back out further as opposed to when I read the statute, it's a little bit clearer 
<clears throat> here's the chair. They, you know, chair decides X and, and, and deputy director answers to that person. These are the data responses. You're just so breaking up a little bit. They have a data supervisory responsibilities and control of the bureau. It, it's to me, it, it reinforces that while there is this chain of command from chair to deputy director, <clears throat> deputy director has her own independent statutory obligations to supervise and control that bureau. And I think if you write it that way, yeah. then it's clearer when you're reading it that yes, there's a structural yeah. chain of command. There's also an inherent day-to-day -day supervision control responsibility that rests with this person. And I think it's clear if you track just literally what the statute says in 6, in 6A. I think that makes sense too. It really does. I, I don't see any of the distinction, I'm sorry, but um, I am assuming that you're, that you're saying the same thing that I think I understand now. I don't think I'm, I don't, you know, I think the statute, I've, I've only read the statute and I, I don't know what the, just how it's helping us in terms of today. Well, because right now as written, it conflates two very distinct sentences about the responsibilities of <clears throat> the deputy director position and it subsumes them within a sentence that points out that the chair is the supervisor of that person. And I think it minimizes the fact that there is an independent statutory obligation of supervision control over the bureau by this position. So if you separate them out, to me that makes it clear that there are two separate statutory obligations. There is the structural one within the commission where you have chair, deputy director, but then when you look at deputy director, what do you have responsibilities for? You have responsibilities for the supervision and control of that bureau. Yeah, so like I see it as a box within, the commission is a big box, and I see this, this unit within the commission. The, the chair and the commission, you know, I happen to have two roles. I'm a chair and a commissioner. I'm one of five. And then, and then there's this box with the IEB that really probably if I had to guess, and I'm guessing because legislative intent is difficult to guess, they wanted to, and, and Commissioner Cameron, you're more aware of this than me, than I, I mean, um, they wanted to make sure that it would be void of that investigatory um, bias, that it could be true independence. But that the chair, they wanted the chair in this instance to control it. Now, in terms of the bias, there's a lot of discussion around how I can control that, all of which I don't need to get into right today, but that that chair directs, controls, and supervises that individual who has a right, bunch but not, of the, not the bureau. You see what I'm saying? That's the distinction that it's I'm drawing. The, but think but if, of course, but it is the, the you're absolutely right, except for this language about the functions of the um, relationship to enforcement, blah, blah, blah. But in, but in terms of the execution of the bureau, it falls under. And I think that's why it's written the way that it is. And so, so I do think there is a distinction there between so you think, what you're talking about and yeah. then the day-to-day -day supervision and execution of the people that staff that bureau. And that so you, does- uh, So who do you think, who do you think um, is in charge of the day-to-day um, -day supervision of the-, of the, the deputy um, director, the deputy yes, director. Yes, I agree with that. And, that's and then, why, and and then in terms of the deputy director, it. the deputy director's performance, who would you say evaluates that? And that, well, performance is a different issue. Who can who can then who supervise? directs controls and supervises right. it? And that Doesn't goes have up any, there. Right. That would be separate from evaluation. Right. Would because super who evaluates this person is not delineated in the statute, and that is something that could go up to ED. So I, I see what I'm saying is when I read six A as is compared to how it's been shortened to try to make it more digestible as written in this posting, the actual authority and responsibility that rests on this person gets minimized as it's written right now. And I think conflated. And I think if we track this, yeah. that becomes clear. Uh, I, I, I guess think, I, I see, right. I don't think we're in any, in terms of the deputy directors, well, I don't think we have any disagreement. I think what we're talking about is the executive director's role. Is the No, I'm but saying. I'm saying you clearly, if we stick with the statutory language in paragraph one, for me anyway, when we get down into duties and responsibilities and interactions with the ED, it's clear to delineate that in the execution of those they can absolutely work with the ED to execute those functions. There's no statutory bar. The so what is the, what is the, so what are you doing, um, Eileen, with respect to the direction, control, and supervision of the chair? How do you not, how are you not minimizing that with that? I'm not um, minimizing at all. I'm, I'm, I'm tracking so the statutory does the, 
to say there's a delineation between the overarching structure and responsibility and control as to that title and position in terms of tasks, and then the day-to-day -day supervision and control, which statutorily rests on the soldiers of the deputy director of the IED. So if we track the language in the statute, both are in there respectively in the way they should be. Karen, how are you feeling about that? So I'm just trying to come, come up with a solution. You know, maybe you just well, put in the job description that um, something to the effect of, you know, the uh, you know director of the investigation enforcement bureau, you know, some kind of um, preface that it's a the bureau is uh, created by statute and just put the statutory language in and instead of trying to adjust it put it in and that leads you to those that would be those first two paragraphs and right. then go back into the director of the IEB because I, I think sort of, this, is how we, it this is how it works on the ground right now right and then you could get into the other stuff later but as long as it's uh, if you're if you're just quoting the statute, I don't know how you can go wrong. Uh, so if you want to put more of the statute and just put it in its complete form, I don't see how that hurts. But well, I guess I would ask that at the, during this, uh, let's just say we're interviewing somebody and they say, well, what is my relationship with the executive director? Do yeah. I say in, in the interview, well, um, it's my position that uh, the chair directs and controls and supervise you. So I would have the ability to evaluate you and then that would be passed on with respect to the executive director and the, you know, the budgetary scheme and we would do that all in a coordinated fashion. Or do I say the executive director would be evaluating you? I don't think the, they're but asking about, who's evaluating uh, them. I see it yeah. as two different things too. No, I, I, I am asking, I'm actually asking the precise question of evaluation. Which I think can be the ED as the administrative head of the and, agency and, because that's separate and distinct from supervised. Yeah. I, I, and, um, and then in terms of the chair's overall supervision and control of the affairs of the organization, how does that fit in? It's, it's not in conflict with having someone else do part of the evaluation or be involved in the evaluation. It doesn't in any way negate it. So, um, Karen, did, did um, Ed evaluate you? Yes. When he was delegated the authority? Did right. um, Gail? When I'm she, not sure if he did. I don't think he did not when you had come in. Did Gail, um, did Gail evaluate you when she was delegated the authority? It was always the executive director. I don't think so. It was always the executive director. That so right? I, I actually, if we could get back to just this, uh, when no, I read I'm just this wondering, job I just think it's interesting. I just, I'm sorry, I, you know, I'm looking at history because Karen has been in that role. So I just think it's interesting because, you know, I really saw Karen in the, in the I treated her in that, in the function as I, as I understood. Well, and let, let, let me add one thing, um, Kathy, since you, since you bring up, um, you know, history, sorry if this is going to take too long, but there was an increased real reluctance, um, uh, you know, as when we were going through the licensing process of having commissioners involved in, in any way, even the perception oh, yeah. of having been involved in the investigation that we were later going to be deciding on. Yes. That's so, my concern and that's what I was yeah. struggling with when we talked about this is how do we make it clear to a candidate yes. that you won't and have that you, um, you won't have that. You won't have, you know, um, the, I'm sorry if this is a, a, a comparison, you know, the, the, the president directs the, the deputy, the, the, the FBI director to do an investigation and no, you have to be independent. Um, and that was a real concern. Maybe that's less of a concern now, but that was the reason why partly, partly this delegation took place. Um, so, but I can explain <laughs> one of the concerns that I have is that delegation took place and then when my successor tried to revoke it, he was challenged because of this notion of administrative bias when in fact the challenge was really about the administration of the timeliness of an, an important investigation. The chair should be able to, under the statute, be able to set timelines, for instance, of an investigation. 
the chair should not, although the language could give permission to become more involved in the investigation, that's tricky because then as a commissioner, you need to be in, you would want to be involved in resolving an appeal, for instance. That piece can be navigated by the proper walling off. I've discussed this with our council. I discussed this on day one of my tenure here. It can be, and that's exactly what is, is imagined by our statutory structure. So what you can't do as an organization is eliminate statutory language and say, well, because we don't like it and we fear, we, we want it to be done differently. We with, never with, felt like we did that, Kathy. Well, we never yeah. felt like we were. Well, they, I mean, yeah, we, I, we didn't. Well, I don't, I think perhaps you may not feel that you did that. I think there could be an, I think there were implications that, that it did take away um, the chair's authority to be able to complete the statute by delegating it to the executive director. We're not talking about that here. Karen and I have been functioning with you as IEB director under the structure that, I, that I'm very comfortable with based on the statutory language. In terms of for an uh, interview for, for clarifying the role, this is important to understand. And if you are saying that the executive director would have, um, let's say, um, the authority to recommend a firing would would that be the executive director's sole authority or would it come back to the commissioners would it go to the chair that's really important i would want to understand that because when i if i were the applicant i would think this role and karen actually said it to me when she reads it she thinks that the fact that they report to the chair makes it elevated makes yeah. it an elevated position and so if we're saying, but no, it's kind of like that, but not really, you really report to the executive director, the executive director evaluates you and will actually have authority to, to hire fire. I mean, I no think one that that's has, a no really one has, important No one has discussion. extrapolated out that far, Kathy. No one has implied no, that. No, that's why, but we're having the discussion. Level. And nothing in the language that I'm talking about raises the specter of that. What it talks about is the day-to-day -day functionality of the Bureau, and it comes off the statutory authority that rests on that person's shoulders, and the fact that this person is ED is going to interact with that individual. Mm -hmm. And there may be times, and we as a commission do have to refuse ourselves, and you're going to have to completely delegate out to the ED, and That's is involved right. in evaluating or making recommendations, yes. in no way undercuts or in any way changes or removes or sloughs off statutory language, in my opinion. So, okay, I, okay then I'm, I agree with you on that. I guess the only thing I, ask, I asked was when you mentioned evaluation, I, this is completely a practical question, guys. Yeah. I think it's completely, I'm not having any concern um, really about the administrative functions. I think Karen, and, and we, can, we can fix the language to address Commissioner Zuniga's um, you know, concern about making sure the administrative efficiencies are accomplished under, because remember, it is within the commission. It doesn't sit outside of the commission. But for an individual who, including potentially Loretta, um, who is um, potentially, um, uh, uh, we haven't, we don't know if she'll apply or not. If they ask the question, well, this is a weird structure, you know, statutorily, who hires and fires me? We should be able to answer that question. So your question is the hire and firing of the deputy director, the, the, the IEB director, or people under them? I think under them, um, the, you know, I think that there would be, I think Karen and I've talked about this, you would use the efficiencies of the HR department and the budgetary restraints that that the um, executive director has to deal with, but they, the IEB, the director would have that authority. I yeah. don't know. I would say that, Karen, you didn't have the executive director dictating that, but you certainly worked with the executive director on the efficiencies. And this is where Ed and I, we never talked about those matters. It was just happening, but Karen would, would tell me, update me on those kinds of developments, but it was, it was fluid because of the, the need for using the HR resources, but it would ultimately have been the, um, the director of the IEB's decision. And I suppose uh, another chair might say, 
wait, I, I really want you to hire A. Well, that's where it gets tricky and we're trying to put language mm -hmm. in here but. that clarifies the roles. So I, I do like Commissioner O'Brien's idea. I was struggling with how do we let this person know what they're actually responsible and are they going to have an in interference with an investigation? So that well, piece, I But think you know, was, you're using the word interference. Um, I'm, I, I'm reading this job description something. and thinking what's going, in, that's why I, I think the more we can clarify it in this job description, the better we are. And, and I, I think, I think that additional language does help with that clarification. I think well, but, that's But one might say, can't, when you say interfere, uh, Commissioner Cameron, no, I, I'm, I'm saying clear. that's what a candidate but, could but, think but, when they. It's right, not but clear. one thing I would say is yep. that, for instance, one when you suggest interference, I'm not sure if that means um, the imposing a timeline, for instance. No, timelines are are certainly well within. Absolutely, I'm talking about the actual investigation. The steps, who to investigate, who not to investigate, those are the things I'm talking about, not timelines. Hey, listen, are you kidding? That's a critical piece. I would that, totally and I think agree we're, with that. Then we're aligned on that. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yeah, and I'm hearing there is some alignment. What I'm sort of hearing from all of you is that it would make sense, really just put the whole uh, section 6A in, in there because it does um, identify uh, the, the role of the deputy director very strongly. So okay. that would be helpful. And what I also hear uh, is some consensus that there is this um, connection with the executive director on administrative functions, you know, the HR budget, and maybe we put in some language, you know, uh, budget HR and other administrative functions of the agency as a whole. So that would you know, Eileen, is that matching up with your thinking? I'm trying to match up with your thinking and what Kathy's thinking. And I think we're, we can get pretty close here in that there, there is administrative connection between the IEB and the agency as a whole. But, but 6A does talk about the Bureau performing the functions. And I, I'm focused on that word functions you know, to di differentiate between what Gail's talking about, getting in, you know, getting in the nitty gritty of an investigation or enforcement action. Right. So the chair sort of have that overview on functions relation to enforcement, including the investigation of the licensees. So that, that may be the way to resolve this. So there's some clarity for any applicant. Because if, and I agree, you, you, if, you, if you read the statute, and I remember reading it way before I even, you know, put in for the job eight years ago, it, there's a lot of authority uh, in the statute for the deputy director. So that seems to make sense in that so, that's mm -hmm. how it would work, you know, with the executive director and the deputy director. So from my perspective as chair, I would imagine that over the course, let's say we hired uh, Gene Smith, and Gene Smith comes in and does a stellar, stellar performance. If given the, the chair's role here, now of course everybody's going to have an impression because the role is so big within the commission, but I would give a, do a performance evaluation and coordinate that in conjunction with the executive director because of that oversight role and and lobby for a raise and then the executive director would have to deal with the budget and the budgetary process and you know commissioner zuniga is involved in that as treasurer so there would be full discussion but let's say gene smith doesn't do well but that's only the perception of the executive director just you know what the executive director it's just clashing, but the chair sees that Gene Smith is doing just fine. Are we as a commission saying that the executive director has that authority or can the chair go to the commission and say, um, this position needs to be secure? Now, I work collaboratively with all of you. That's why we're actually having this discussion today. I wanna to make sure everybody's on board. 
I receding that to the executive director? Under the statute, the executive director may make hires subject to our approval. That doesn't mean- No one, that, no that one doesn't, is- doesn't, just one second. That does not mean that we don't have the capacity to make hires as a board. I don't recommend that. The operations are with the executive director. This position, I wonder if it's, if it's um, because of the structure, if it's different. If the evaluation, everything is through the executive director and she's in charge, and I say she because it's Karen today, but he or she is in charge of all a staff, including the, the IEB director, then we need that clarified because it's not obvious to me, but obviously any candidate would want to know that. Okay, so for, mm -hmm. for me to clarify what I'm saying, because I think I'm saying something and you're hearing something different, which is okay. they are not really exclusive. To have the ED involved as part of the evaluative process mm -hmm. in no way suggests we don't have the authority and continue to maintain the authority to select and have control over hiring and firing of the director of the IEB. So okay. this idea that there is interaction and collaboration and work going on between deputy director of IEB and ED, that would include, in my view, correctly an evaluation of performance doesn't negate our authority they are not mutually exclusive the fact that the ed involved does not then that's have right. us completely divest ourselves of authority so i don't think we're saying different things no that's think. not i agree so, entirely uh, with that. Know, it, to me this is literally taking statutory language so we don't recreate the wheel and create confusion or problems in the opening part of this job description then you have the functionality part as you go into the detail later that yep. is, in fact, for the reality on the ground of making an agency function, going to have to interact with the ED. And yeah, that person is going to be able to give feedback. Absolutely. And if they have a circumstance where someone yeah, says, is, you know, which is like what you're doing. And then it comes back to the commission to make that determination. It does not mean we are ceding authority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and then I that think we're sense. in agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that clarifies it, and it is uh, an important piece. And I, I think in reality, um, an executive director, now we're on our third one, has never made these key decisions without input from the commission. It's never right. been us against them, ever, and it really but shouldn't this be, is, right? Yeah, and, and this is just a good juncture, Gail, to have this conversation, because we won't always have this immediate history. You know, we can't really work on just past, so it's, um, it's a good understanding. Yeah. Agreed. No, I, hey, listen, everything should be evaluated and making sure we're following the law properly, but yet we still have uh, a way to function that makes sense and i i don't think they're mutually exclusive no and you have to resolve it because it's going to be the question the candidate asks who's That's hiring right. me who can fire me yeah or and who? what are my responsibilities <laughs> and can you imagine we're looking at each other going oh no oh, no. <laughs> yeah. so, what i'm hearing yeah, is, a great starting point so what i'm hearing is that there is agreement that it is uh, a commission as a body hire and fire is that correct yep Okay. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and of course, a, with respect to the chair's um, input, because you know, right. under you know, because that, of that role. And if if there is a question in the interview process about uh, performance evaluation, it would be similar to what we're doing here. You know, in conjunction with the executive director and the chair, uh, and and probably input from the commission. Of course. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. always okay. skip. And and you know the, 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 the challenge will be if there's a there's a challenge would be if there's, there's a chair and the commission just aren't aligned on this issue. That would be a, that would be a challenge going forward. I don't see it with us yeah. because of how I operate. Another chair might say it really is completely within the chair's control because of that language. Yeah. Okay. And they've, and they've had statutory language to point to. Well, and, and honestly, well, but yeah. then they're putting themselves in jeopardy. And if someone wanted to do right. that, 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 that would, you know, we would just have to point out why we think that they are putting themselves in jeopardy to operate that way. But, well, and, you know. and the reason why my real, the logic, again, divorcing myself from the role, uh, Commissioner Cameron, is that the, the legislature, if they had really wanted it to be this separate thing, they would have kept it outside the commission. But it is within the commission's construct, yep. so there has to be a natural use of these resources to create efficiencies. Correct. Consensus. That's, that's what we're saying, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, but, but on the other hand, the chair in this role has some kind of a distinct difference 
and, and that language is there. And as I said, it's my inclination. I, I don't delegate it away, but I sure as heck need a whole bunch of help to have it accomplished. And, and that's with the executive director and with a strong you know, deputy director, IEB director, you know, with the IEB director. Yes. Being strong. Yes. It's a huge role. And, and, you know, the good news is Karen did have the role and she appreciates how big of a role it is. But that fundamental question is, is as Bruce just pointed out, is you know, who, who do I truly answer to? Well, it is tricky. It is tricky. The construct yeah. is difficult. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, as, as far as some specific language so we can get this, this posting done, um, do you want some kind of, you know, what I'm hearing is that, so, well, let me, let me do a hypothetical. Maybe this will flush it out. Uh, if the head of the IEB wants to give, um, you know, one of the division chiefs a raise, who signs off on that? Is that the chair or is that the executive director? You mean within IEB? Correct. Or wants to restructure or promote someone. I, I think it I think that, that IEB director could make the case to the executive director who has total yeah. budgetary and then of course go to the chair and the commission and, and not just the chair even because the commission doesn't have to get involved with every single hire, you know, um, you know, if it's someone with a raise, I think they try they to would, meet. They, they would make the make. case and make the case to the to the chair and say this is what we think is appropriate, but I would think that you know in order to get to that step you'd have to be on the same page with the executive director. Right, and I think if there was a collision, then the chair might try to be an umpire of sorts, and then if it becomes you know this is really not working, the chair goes to the commission says this is you know this this collision is happening. We've got to figure out policies and procedures to help on this. Yeah, and I know hopefully we that won't happen. Hopefully. That's right. I, I don't think we're imagining. Right, and I, I do think things will be worked out. So, so there's language in this posting about you know in coordination with the executive director. So, do you like that language for the posting? For so you I, could change that. Uh, you know, in coordination with the executive director. Uh, you know. Uh, no, because it is in coordination with the executive director. Right. And then, so and, budget, like, right. HR, and, and other administrative functions with the understanding if there are real issues, we have the commission as a resource to resolve issues. Yes, and, 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 and basically chair, that's and the, the way it's been functioning for every um, every position, frankly. That's what's been happening. So we're just codifying that and clearly laying, uh, laying out what the, um, what the roles and responsibilities are. Okay. Karen. So, that second, that second to last bullet, I would just expand upon it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. It's not just finance, it's legal, it's mm -hmm. HR, it's, you know, communications, you know, it's kind of partner right. with other commission departments to effectively assist with the management of the IEB. I mean, that's kind of I want to be really, language. let's be really careful though, Bruce. It's then, you know, if it's legal, and there's a collision in terms of a legal analysis. Um, you know, the there's the I, I liken it more as a um, not a decision making um, uh, partnership, but rather a sharing of, of administrative efficiencies. Uh, the commission has one HR department. Does mm -hmm. it make sense within the bureau to have an HR? You know, specialist? No. no. Enrique is going absolutely not. Yeah, right. <laughs> the budget, right? You just so saw I dollar see, signs. As opposed to, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. As opposed to the executive director over every other, you know, unit has um, has really control and supervision can make the decisions. I think the executive director and the IEB director will always be needing to share ideas and partner and and but the IEB director will will have to, you know, be coordinating in order mm -hmm. to to access the resources they need to to administer the functions of the bureau, right? Right. Um, I just wanted but to if expand there's a decision, that. A decision would not necessarily be that solely of the executive director because there is a little bit of a. Say, right. So the the right? word partner makes sense then, right? As opposed to uh, decision making. 
Yeah, that's, that's the means coordinate yeah. and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Right. Yeah, I yeah, think my that, point I on the I last use bullet a, was just not limiting to finance. Right, yeah. Works. Yeah, and of course, the finance is unique. And as I remind Karen all the time, you own that all on your own. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> With Commissioner Zuniga's help. With Treasurer, some, some yeah. aspects of Treasury, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Do you want legal in there? Because I, I, I'm just playing around with the language. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. You could have in coordination yeah. with the executive director, partner with the other with other departments on administrative functions, including but not limited to finance, HR, uh, yeah. and legal and communications you want legal in there yes because uh, you know that's something we've talked about that how todd's team really does provide guidance to and yep. has been um yep. on on um really very broad legal matters the uh, loretta's team is really focused on ieb legal functions and we like the idea of them continuing to collaborate together yes to yes to build on that yep. that's critical Let's okay. add IT. Let's not forget our oh, friends in IT. Oh, never forget IT. I'm going to put uh, what, right finance here. IT. Yeah. Yeah. Katrina's like, uh, yeah, come on, Karen. Where's IT? All right. Right. Um, good so catch. It's just a broad not limited to, So I have in coordination with the executive director, partner with other departments on administrative functions, including but not limited to finance, IT, HR, legal, and communications. And that's actually a really important piece of the puzzle because you wouldn't want the um, person to come in thinking I've got to build or you know maintain all of those kinds of functions. They okay. have access the benefit of that big umbrella. Right. Okay. Karen, at the, at the top of this document, we have the posting as director. Do we need to add deputy director? Well, we've got it in here. It becomes a, it's a little confusing because you know we've got other directors and you know so you know Kathy and I. Uh, I think Kathy had a, a, a good idea. It's, so we call it the comma rule. Where it's <laughs> deputy director, comma, director of investigations and enforcement bureau. So it matches the statute identifying it as, as the deputy director of investigations and enforcement, but director of the bureau. Okay. Yeah. And so um, in terms of any organization chart, which we know that Karen is working on and that's really, yeah. you know, her just, thing, she could use that deputy director, comma, um, more than once, not necessarily solely, but she could choose it to be the sole deputy director under the statute and then have other ones if that's what she wants to do. But that's her big ball of wax she's got to work on now. We, mm -hmm. yeah. We're happy to have that as a key assignment because it's going to add a lot of clarity. And so is there consensus that I should adjust this par first paragraph and really just include all the language in the statute so it's clear and we're not paraphrasing? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I do too. I like uh, Eileen's suggestion. Yes. Yeah, I had thought just you know referring to the statute itself, but I think it probably does help to to spell it out and just use it verbatim. I appreciate it though, and Karen, just so you know, I think I think down below we we might have it might be repeated. So because um, I think you just make sure. Okay, I'm just changing yeah. the font here. When, when you'll just want to make sure it's not duplicative down below. Now, I think we should probably have an introductory sentence, but I, I could do that. I don't know if you yeah. want to um, you know, just do that start right off now. With a, just start off with a reference to the chapter. All right, I'll just highlight that and I, I can add that, but that's easy enough. You don't need to. Okay, so yes. Well, this yes. this so makes it really all clear, guys. We'll have an easy time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is fun. Okay. It is, it's uh, a it's a, com a complex structure. So. Any other uh, comments or about the duties and responsibilities? Okay. Uh, yeah, they were shortened considerably. There were so many in the first one. Yeah, and it was a, a it little. Was, little and it was the, yeah, it was where you went to kindergarten. It really right, was. Right. The, <laughs> So Commissioner, you, Commissioner Cameron, then you're you've had a chance to look at it, but you feel yes. we're not we didn't we're not omitting anything that not you nothing would have critical. Wanted to include. Like, no, I don't think sometimes so. Sometimes it's I hard think to think is, what you what we should include as opposed to. No, that. we don't want candidates to glaze over when they read this. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. They should um, be you know, excited about them. applying. Right. <laughs> right. So so the next section is on skills and qualifications. 
Uh, so the first bullet, bullet here, we do have um, ability to understand gaming regulatory requirements, particularly internal control submissions by casino operators. We may not get, you know, it, it, because we're in Massachusetts, there's a very limited number of people that understand gaming in Massachusetts. Yep. You may not get someone that has experience in that area, but we wanted to flag it because that is such a critical component of the operations. I mean, you look at what the game agents are doing on a daily basis with, with the internal control submissions. So that would mean either experience with it or you've got to be able to understand capacity. How to do that. Right. I think, yeah. it, I think Given, it's difficult to include that because down below you say regulatory experience in the casino and gaming industry is preferred. So well, it says or other regulatory organization. So um, it's helpful if you have this experience. Obviously, the, you're going to have a stronger ability to understand this if you have experience in it. But at a minimum, you've got to be able, you know, we've got to have some kind of determination by the, uh, by in the hiring process that someone would be able to understand this. Because if they, they don't have the ability to understand this, they can't do the job. I think ability to understand is great. It's fine. Okay. And, and, and yeah. you know, it won't dissuade anybody from, um, you know, from saying, well, my, my banking experience or my utility regulatory experience, you know, or internal controls. Yeah. SEC, I think, I think something it's just like that. Fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. The question is, do you want to lead with that bullet? Are you going to lose people if they see something that specific and don't extrapolate to their own experience? Is there a way to reorder the bullets? Yeah, we can we and we, you know, I can I can flip any of these around. You want to run through these and then see what the what the commission wants to do as far as the order. Would that help? Let's fix flip the first and last. Start off with the good character, honesty, integrity piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check. Yeah. Like that. And go wrong with that. Okay. Although sometimes that takes a little self-reflection. It's all good. Modesty is not there. <laughs> 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 De decent humility. Now, I, I will say this. It's what it, the statute has: honesty, integrity, and good character in that order. Does anybody care what order it's in? Let's do it no. the same. Let's do it the same way. Okay. If it's in there, what? These are, you know, if you're holding your licensees to a standard, you want to. Um, yes, hold that's it. Absolutely. I, I didn't think right? about that. That's good, Karen. And you can flip that second bullet down to the end uh, to, uh, to, the to, end? to make, uh, yeah, Commissioner O'Brien's point that that's not. Uh, but it, it does say what? understand and not have, uh, you know, expertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I maybe, would hope that someone wouldn't be turned off. Yeah, and that was our point. I mean, it is it is a big plus. How about and how about if we said complex regulatory requirements? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, gaming. You, you know. And then, and then we get the preference with respect to re regulating gaming as a preferred down below, because. Okay, the only thing is, we're t there, is a, there is a specific reference to internal control submissions, and that, um, you know, by, by casino operators. Um, what do you mean? See the next clause? So that's lifted from the statute, Karen? What, no, no, that's just, uh, just know, the, knowing what you know. That's in bolts of what we do on a daily basis. So, so. what if we say ability to, um, to understand um, complex regulatory requirements, um, yeah, in, I, in, I, including I, internal control submissions um, by casino. Um, by are there casino other operators. are there other industries, um, Enrique? Yeah. Maybe in finance that SEC provide yeah. internal yeah, control submissions. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot of internal Banking. control in finance. Not, uh, I don't think. Um, and it's particularly with the ability to understand, it's, it's fine here. I would actually shy away from complex, um, Kathy, okay. um, you know, from, from this standpoint. And I had actually thought about it on the experience, where uh -huh. it says experience in complex investigations. It's, it, it, particularly those three words. From the standpoint of trying to recruit minorities, the, the best practice is to look at things like experience, um, you know, like minimum 10 years, and we don't have that here, but- um, We took it we, out. Yeah, 
because because those things tend to act as a barrier to the for the you know for for those opportunities so Perfect. I'm sorry if it's just, it if it's just the word complex that that uh, that i think doesn't add too much yeah. but maybe maybe it takes away from well, and it's interesting, Enrique, you mentioned that because what we had originally in the original job description, it had put it, it had been criminal investigations. So yeah. it changed right. it to complex because it doesn't necessarily need to be criminal. There's also no. right. for investigations. So that's why it, it, it's interesting. So do you right. want just experience in investigations? Yep. Yeah. Take out complex. I think he's um, raising a good point. That's a great flag. Thank you, Enrique. Okay. That was my big contribution from this whole section. <laughs> is there anything else in the skills and qualifications this high and i don't know why it's flagged int integrity i don't know why it's flagged. don't you hate when that happens oh, they want, oh we God, want you to have a comma it. oxford I comma oh, yeah he asked gotcha. for a comma after the end yeah. thank and you. then and take out the comma at the end of character oxford yeah. comma yeah thank you um, um no, carrie likes a good oxford ca a comma so she's listening there shara does too i do okay. Experience um, in creating administrative efficiencies through technological solutions and or system innovations. Because to, you know yeah. we, we deal with process so often, the whole licensing process, the regulatory review process, all these things, someone that has some experience and, and thinks that way would be very helpful. Um, demonstrated <laughs> competence in managed and diverse workforce written written and verbal skills yeah. uh many tasks and pressure situation you know all these are kind of just the type of skills you'd have to have in order to be successful yeah um, I, would, I would add somewhere and I'm, I'm i think we can make it clearer that um and it may be under that third bullet but talking about presenting in public when you talk about the public arena but yeah you know making a public presentation i think is a critical skill that the other ones kind of danced around. Uh, so maybe ability to uh, make ability or experience making public presentations. Are you all right with the second bullet being second, or do you want to have it in a different place? I might move that down. I would I think, move that down. I like yeah. the third bullet being the next one. I do too. Yeah, agreed. And they kind of goes hand in hand, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, and it demonstrates our priorities. Yeah, I like that. I think that's right, uh, Commissioner. I think that's exactly right. So then we. Uh, it's a, it's something, there's something wrong. Ability or experience. It's an, yeah, you've got I think he was saying either word. I don't think he needs both. You need both. Oh, right. In other words, if they can't, if they can't say on their on their resume, look, I made this public, uh, you know, pre presentation. But yet, when speaking to them, you know, they have the ability to do it because that they're articulate and they are um, uh, able to understand what the job requires here. So I think I, I like so, um, so experience like and or ability yes um, i like both like as, as oh, experience in or ability to to make experience. public presentations or um she, she she present present the 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 word word thing. should be different yeah experience in or ability to present present uh, um in a public uh, forum cogently or coherently in public or something like that is that what you yeah mean? You, st you still have a little bit of a wordsmith issue but that's okay we'll get to it yeah experience in in a uh, public presenting um yeah or experience or ability a public yeah. meeting or a public forum yeah 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 you say yeah, still, still a wordsmith problem eileen where are you we need your help yeah well, i'm wondering if you experience in or demonstrated ability in um in making oral presentations in public forums What was it? Demonstrate ability to what? What was that? In, in making. In making oral presentations in a public forum. <laughs> this is okay. funny, isn't it? This, this person has got to be so close. 
<laughs> but I love that we're doing this in a public arena. I love yeah, well, it. This know, is but this is this is for me my favorite kind of yeah. a meeting where we're just getting it done. I love it. You like so. the making of sausage. Experience it or demonstrate. Yeah. Experience oh, or demonstrate. Experience or demonstrated ability in making oral presentations in a public forum. How's that? I, th I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Anything else in skills and qualifications? Yeah. Um, Karen, only if under that ability to synthesize, summarize, and disseminate information, there is a mention of the public arena. Yeah. But I think we cover that with the new language we just put in. But I think that ability to summarize, synthesize, and disseminate important details in accessible fashion and in a timely manner, I would just take out in a public arena. Yeah, don't we don't need to do that, that. now. That's right. Because yeah. it's redundant, right? Uh, yeah, and also you don't always, we want them to synthesize in private too. Right. <laughs> right. I synthesize strictly in public. Not too much to in private. Keep with our transparency. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we've got the business and financial reports that, you know, supervising that, uh, that division is, is a big piece of the job. You've got to at least have the ability to do it, whether yeah. or not you have the experience, you know, it. If you can't do that, you won't be able to do the job. So um, that's really important. And I'm hoping Looks Monica good. is listening right now. <laughs> um, okay, and then experience, education, and training, bachelor's degree, and significant management experience. We had some back and forth about the, you know, the number of years. If you if you give a number of years, you potentially could miss out on a candidate. So. Um, you know, we didn't necessarily want to limit that, but right. management experience is going to be critical because it is a big unit and you're not only supervising, um, you know, different divisions with different functions, but you've also got the interaction with the Massachusetts State Police, which is, you know, a, a, it's sort of a different type of management because it's a sister agency. So, um, this, this is broad enough to cover a lot, I think, is what my point is. I, I would just I would just want to point out that we also have a posting for the licensing division chief, which does yes. call for no more, you know, between five and ten years of management experience. So I want yep. us to be somewhat consistent, but I would mm -hmm. think this position would require no less than five years. Right. Well, you right. know, the the interesting thing is um, on that, Bruce, is that that might have been posted without our being as aware as we want to be with respect to the implications that Commissioner Zunica just mentioned mm -hmm. in terms of um, how we evaluate what management experience is and how it might impact a candidate of color. So the five to 10 years, um, you know, that, that was in another posting. And we've, we used a number in the last posting, Commissioner Cameron, maybe you remember, Yes, um, and, and, and I'm in total agreement. I like significant and not put a number on it. Okay. Commissioner Zuniga, are you comfortable with the word significant? Yes, totally fine. It's a, it's a high level job, but uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in agreement with this. So I think um, uh, Commissioner Stebbins, if, we'll, if you'll allow us to keep significant in there, but be of course cognizant of that, that other um, posting, um, it just might be the type of management experience. I suspect we'll probably see more than five years, but again, um, it's it's also the quality as well as the quantity of years. Sure. Then I, I would just, again, I'm just pointing that out. I'm happy with the word significant, but, you know, let's also send a message that, you know, as we, as Maybe our team in the does future, other, other postings posting. that yeah. we don't see, yeah. Um, yeah, that we reflect yeah, that, that is, language. Yeah, and that is something, you know, so um, for that uh, position and, and um, we're, we're also working on the position for the, uh, the legal division, we do have a, not only, uh, you know, Tripti and, and their team, they also flag the same issue. So they, and even in comments, they flag the same issue. And then we do have Jill now in, as our diversity uh, point person for the commission is involved in every hire. So I'm encouraged that we're going in that direction and consistent there. So uh, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we do have, you know, experience in investigations. We don't limit it to criminal investigations. And I did in, 
you know, at, include this language about the same kind of thing we did up above, which including the ability to understand the suitability investigatory process, you're going to be very limited in scope if someone has to have experience in that area. But they, you know, to Enrique's point, you know, SEC investigations, other, you know, federal regulatory agencies, that may, that may um, coordinate well, and they would, this person might have the ability to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we do ask for uh, regulatory experience in the casino gaming industry or other uh, regulatory organization preferred. That is going to be helpful, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. So that did that. We do have language, JD is not required, but considered a plus. Um, I did push for that in the, in the posting. My experience uh, in the position is that I am constantly dealing with other attorneys in, in you know, in general counsels at companies, the licensee. Uh, so that has been a benefit. Also, this person is supervising the chief enforcement counsel's office, so they're supervising attorneys. So it may not be required, but it would be something that would be an asset. So that's, we don't want to eliminate anyone that may want to apply that doesn't have a JD, but recognizing that would be helpful. So a, attorneys, if they see the posting, may say, oh, this might make sense for me, you know, as, as an attorney with this other experience as well. So I know Gail's not as I'm, sold as I am on it. I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't to... want to exclude anyone is what I'm right. saying. And if right. this helps you bring in some more attorneys, right. because they right. don't look at it as strictly uh, investigations, Right. Um, I'm fine, but I don't want, I've always wanted a bigger pool of candidates. Right. So that's why we specifically said it's not required. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think there's so much about, you know, hearing processes, regulations yeah. that, that usually a JD brings real understanding of the nuances of language and whatnot. Okay. So I, I, I think it's fine the way it reads. Okay. Yep. We know that Oxford comma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell you, it's something I've come to appreciate, not yeah. being an, a, a, a lawyer myself, of the importance. Uh, and then we do include uh, next paragraph, success, successful candidate would support the mission and values of the Gaming Commission, uh, advance a fair, transparent, and participatory process. Um, I thought that I think yeah. Kathy had included that. That's important, especially, you know, sort of the beginning of the end, that this is something somewhere it's, it's going to be noted. Uh, we have the salary range, 145 to 160. Uh, any questions on that? Okay. Uh, and then... And we have to put the numbers in, correct? Well, I think for Talio, this is my understanding. And this, we'll have to give this, I have uh, sent a draft over to HR. If, if it goes in the state system to be posted on the mass of system uh, through the Tilio system, there, we may have to make some, I don't know if they have to make some adjustments, but HR will let us know if we have to make some adjustments in order to get it. You know, I don't know if there's there's limits on that, but we can post this on our website, et cetera. So we may have to um, coordinate with them on what makes sense for that particular avenue for posting. Um, you know, background check, Corey check. Yeah. Um, and then just some language, this language at the bottom is we, I think we put in all of our posting just to give some understanding of what the commission does as a whole. And also our policy is that uh, we do not discriminate. Right. Yeah. Um, do you think it's important when we say drug screen um, that folks know that it is not, that that does not include marijuana? Or we just leave it the way it is. This is this is how we've done it. I know, but the law has changed since right. um, eight nine years ago when we first put this together. So I just didn't know if it was it was important to clarify that or not. Um, you know, I may uh, I may have to talk to HR and legal about what the you know what the best practice is for that because I'm sure we're not the first agency dealing with that. Yeah. What if right. we only said illegal drug screen? Well, it's still illegal federally, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But we do not screen for cannabis in, in our, in our, in our right. Um, profile. Right. right. I'm sure now that's something that could be specified in the, in the, in the interview. Yeah, I was just going to say the same yeah. thing, Enrique. 
stop anybody mm -hmm. from applying. Yeah, nobody nobody has to have the drug screen until they they're getting they get an offer. So it would only be the final candidate. So we could explain that right. again. I'm fine. I just thought of it that yeah, I, no, I remember when we we had that discussion early on and we decided not to screen for cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, that was a decision we made, which was different than other agencies, right? Right. But even since then, the law has expanded. So I, I, I'm fine. We're fine. Okay. So uh, seems like what uh, we need to do. Um, seems like we're in pretty good shape here. I would just need to add sort of a sentence introdu introducing this the chapter under the law that this is where the position comes from. But um, you know, if you're comfortable, I can play around with that and um, come up with something I think is consistent with what you're all saying here. Uh, any other comments, thoughts, or anything else you want to go over? I think we should go over the strategy for posting so that we can get, as Commissioner Cameron said, the widest um, applicant pool. I know okay. that Jill will have some good strategies, but if we could just brainstorm real quickly. Yeah, I would like to, to you know, at some point hear from HR as to where we think we can get this out. I mean, there's international gaming regulatory groups. There's yeah. <clears throat> some of the you know the usuals like LinkedIn or Indeed. I mean, just to yeah. post this on the state system isn't going to be as broadly as we reach a broad group of candidates. So um, what I could do is, if if we're comfortable with the sort of the general framework and and uh, make the uh, adjustments, I could also update the commission because we'll have to maybe we could come up with the proposal for. Uh, where this is going and how we're posting it within the staff and then address that at a, at a public meeting. Does that make sense? Next Thursday. We have, I think, I know that we're, we're juggling some appointments. Mine shifted today to 8 a.m. So oh, okay. juggling. Right. Um, uh, so um, do we, do we need to do that or could you do that just um, as a one-off with each of us, just as a listening exercise? Uh, I guess yeah. it would be as- Yeah, I, I could do that. Cause what I'd probably do is, um, you know, I, I, well, let me, let me ask, I, I want to do this properly. If, if um, cause I don't want to violate any open meeting law, but it, if I'm just doing an introductory sentence, I think we generally That's have a, a sense of Yeah, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, Gail and I have been, you know, we've been working together right. on That's, this effort. Yeah. So, if yeah, everybody's comfortable it. that we would we would make sure that it reflects today's discussion I, I don't think that anyone's concerned about the wordsmithing um, or, uh, I, I, I am not I'm, 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 okay. I'm happy as All well right. to let you guys decide which okay. which um, yeah, and it sounds like what I'm hearing is um, more is better so the, the broader we can get it out so I can check in with the commissioners I can have Tripti and Jill check in with the commissioners, indicate these are some of our ideas, and then if any commissioner has any other ideas, we can always add it. That's yeah. right. That, okay. What you could All do right. is, uh, in that, you could update us. You could update us that on you know next Thursday, and then if somebody says, oh, I thought of another idea, then yeah. just add yeah. it, because it's okay. What would the time frame be then, commissioners? That's why I thought it was really important for us to convene today, because we think... wanted to get this going. Yes, I think quickly we could we could just you know we're adding not only the state uh, you know the state the usual suspects within the state but broadening that with our um, gaming publications. Mm -hmm. So are we talking a four week posting, or does that feel right to you because of the it's a big job? Um, what do you think? I guess I mean, a yeah. month that, is plenty of time. Right. Yeah, month, yeah. Okay. month is fine. Can I ask, they just apply, how do they apply? The Leo helps us, I believe, by right. my so recollection. They, yeah. There's a, there's a, funny? I don't know how you apply for the job. Yeah, I mean, usually Talia, they, have they an can email submit address. electronically through Taleo or else if they, for example, if, if we would post this on our website, someone can submit a cover letter and, and so a resume. A cover letter and a resume, and that's what we, we expect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, for and an email address to email it to say HR, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah. Whatever those mechanics, but that's all we want. That's all we yes. want is a cover letter. Um, yeah, we want to simplify juncture. it so we don't uh, dissuade people from. I, I understand. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, um, 
Maybe what we could then do is convene a, an administrative meeting like this just on process once we, um, yeah. uh, I, I, we can't review the candidates. Um, well, we can always do it in public, I suppose, but we, um, that can be done through a different process, but I think that needs to be discussed, just the process that we want to engage in. Um, so before we get actual, um, before you start looking, maybe that's a better way of putting it, Karen, yeah. at any, um, any applications, convene, we'll convene a meeting like this so that you can go through what you anticipate for a, a process and, and how we're going to, to make this higher as a team. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Is that, Eileen, are you in agreement with that kind of, that's what we did, I think, Enrique, with um, initially with the executive director. So we'll just have another quick convene before anybody starts to open up any of the uh, applications. Okay. Then yeah, I, I know Jill is on here. Did Jill, you know, do you have any thoughts now or did you want to take a little time to think about it? I know Tripti's on a day off today, so she's not available. And I, I know Derek is on the, on the call as well. Um, any thoughts regarding um, recruitment? Correct. Uh, yes, I would um, add that there are other um, avenues um, in addition to what the commissioners mentioned. Um, the partnership um, and also affinity groups like the Mass Black Lawyers Association, the Hispanic Lawyers Association, Asian American, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, but, you know, I would, I would look at that and, and um, there are various um, law enforcement groups that sort of thing yeah the law enforcement yeah. groups too right? everybody looks yeah. to iecp for the law enforcement postings that's okay, that's okay. the go-to place for jobs okay. okay great yeah so that's where we want to do that that crossover commissioner wider, the wider yeah yeah commissioner o'brien do you have any thoughts too in terms of the um the law enforcement side no okay that's nothing yeah. And and Jill, you've been following our discussion. Were you comfortable with the edits we made to um, make sure that we weren't inadvertently creating a barrier? I, I think those were um, well thought out, and I agree fully. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Good. Okay. What do you think, Karen? I think this was very helpful. I have a, I think I have a draft ready to go and I'll finalize that first sentence and we will begin the process to get this moving. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's input today because, um, you know, we, we can't do it separately. And so it's uh, in, important to go through some of this sometimes tough statutory language to understand because it is not, not complicated. So appreciate today's uh, guidance. I wish that, quite frankly, um, if, if we hadn't had such a, a big uh, bit of business when I first was uh, appointed, this would have been the exercise I would have loved to have done on day one. So, um, right. so thank you so much. It really is helpful. Can I just um, clarify one thing? Natasha was very helpful and sent me an email just to clarify that the commission does use the Tulio applicant tracking system for all the job applications, but they don't have an established practice for accepting applications through email. When it, we post a job to our website, it's a link to the Commonwealth job page in order to drive all applications through the applicant tracking system. And that allows uh, the commission to ensure that we collect consistent information from all candidates and that our record keeping of applications is consistent and compliant with applicable laws and best practices. So thanks, Natasha, for sending that over. And that's, so, so that's the system. So um, that's really helpful for the posting for the Massachusetts posting, but for one of the organizations that that uh, Jill, well, you can, you can, Cameron mentioned, yeah. So you can alert them, but then there would be a reference that would and the talk is on back in that puts them back in that right. system. Yeah. So, so no matter still, what, they go so in that's that. helpful. Thanks, this, Natasha. They're still taking hard copies, huh? Wow. Rather well, than no, no. What you know, she's saying is they're not that they they go through Toledo. But, but do they email it to that group? Is that what you're saying? It rather, or they, they want a hard copy? What did, how was, because you said there's no email capability. I guess not an email address that we can use. Right, so you that. can't email, uh, here she's, she, she, hold on, she's got a comment here, one second for me, hold on one second. Sorry. 
generally we send job alerts out to other organizations. We link, we include a link to our website. So if you sent it to the IACP, there'd be a link to say right. this is how you apply. Okay, that's fine. But that link goes back into the big system, not to us directly. So doesn't go to HR. Right. That's, that's what, yes. So uh, hopefully that doesn't cause a lot of friction. Yeah. That doesn't cause. Well, it, and it's been working successfully so far. So we, um, we yeah. get a lot of applications. So. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And I, yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Cameron, that yeah. would uh, it'd be interesting if you still had to decide if you wanted ivory or, or a slight green tint for your resume, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think uh, <laughs> I, I, I misunderstood which was it yeah, gets yeah, yeah. emailed there rather than to us. Because <laughs> I was saying, wow. Oh, yeah. no, no. So, uh, so I think uh, we're all set to move forward. Um, Madam Chair, so I think that, but we do have the executive session and that's, well, we that's an 11 o'clock invite. So we would have to. That's okay. So um, I just want to make sure everybody's comfortable with this item number two on our agenda. We're all set, no further yep. right. uh, steps. We'll have, we'll take a quick look. It'll get posted and, and everybody will navigate. We'll reconvene on the next steps of process. So um, in terms of, um, Commissioner updates. Uh, that's next on our agenda, number three. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Um, we'll go number four. I don't have any other business. I've anticipated it all. So this morning we took care of that. Um, in terms of number five, uh, the commission does anticipate that it will meet in executive session in accordance with uh, general laws, chapter 30A, section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation as discussion of the subject matter at an open meeting may have a detrimental effect in, <clears throat> on the litigating position of the commission. And the public session um, of the commission meeting will not reconvene at the conclusion of the executive session. In order to go into executive session, uh, we do have to have a roll call vote by majority is there anyone who wishes to move on that? So moved. Second. Thank you. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, uh, Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. And I vote by zero. Thank you. Uh, Shara? recording that and as always thank you for all of your help um so i don't at this point we don't need to adjourn because we will adjourn at the conclusion of the executive session this